Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a few theorems of cross products. Here's three of them. There's probably more, but let's just take a look at these three. And remember, we have two vectors, a and b, which are in the same plane. And then if we do a cross product between them, and of course we have an angle between a and b, let's call the angle theta. When we do the cross product with a and b, we get a third vector C, which is perpendicular to both A and B. And because of that, the first theorem states that if we take the first vector A and we do a dot product with the cross product of A and B, that should equal zero. And likewise, when we take the vector B and we do a dot product between B and the cross product of A and B, we should get zero as well. And the result of that is we realize that the cross product A cross B must be perpendicular to A and the cross product A and B must be perpendicular to the vector B. Well, let's explore that. So first of all, we can say that A, and so we're going to explain, number one, if we have vector A and we're going to do a dot product with the cross product of A cross B, well, that is equal to A dotted with C, if we assume C is the resultant of A cross B. So let's write that down, that the vector C is equal to the cross product of A with B. All right, so now we say, well, A dot C, we can say that this is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of C times the cosine of the angle between the two because that's the definition of the dot product. And of course, let's make this a little bigger, there's a dot product. Now, we can, we can look at A and C, and the angle between A and C, A and C here, that must be 90 degrees because A and C must be perpendicular, because the resultant C must be perpendicular to the plane made by A and B. So therefore, this is equal to A times C times the cosine of 90 degrees. Well, which is equal to A times C times the cosine of 90 degrees, which is zero. So therefore, this is equal to zero, showing that this is indeed a true statement. Now we'll do the same for the other vector B. So two, we have the vector B with the dot product with the cross product of A and B, which is equal to the vector B dot product with C. And the same again, this is equal to b times c times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, let's see here. If I use the angle theta here, that's not the same angle as theta there. This could get confusing, so let me go ahead and make that angle phi. And the angle theta is going to be the angle between c and b and c and a. That's a better way to write it so we don't get confused here. So, again, we know that the angle between b and c here must be 90 degrees because it's a right angle. So this is equal to B times C times the cosine of 90 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 90 is zero. This is B times C times zero, which is zero. Again, proving that the second statement is true. What about the third statement? A cross B squared, so the magnitude of A cross B squared is equal to the magnitude of a squared times the magnitude of b squared minus the dot product of a times b squared. Hmm, is that true? Well, let's see. Let's come over here. What we can say is that a cross b, by definition, is equal to c. Okay? And what we can say here is that c can be defined as A times B times the, let's see here, times the sine of the angle between them. And of course, sine of theta, and I don't want to use theta because that's the wrong angle. Let's use the angle phi, and let's just use the magnitude. So in other words, C is equal to the magnitude of C, which is A times B times the sine of the angle between them. And that means that C squared is equal to a squared times b squared times the sine squared of phi. Now the sine squared of phi can be written as 1 minus the cosine squared. So this can be written as a squared times b squared times 1 minus the cosine squared of phi, which means that this can be written as a squared times b squared minus 
a squared b squared times the cosine square of phi. Now, a squared a times b times the cosine of phi is the dot product. So this can be written as a squared times b squared minus the quantity a dot b, like this, quantity squared. Because, well, let's, I skipped one step. I don't think I want to do that, so it doesn't make it too confusing. So let's write it like this. Let's write it as a times b times the cosine of phi quantity squared. Now this here is the resultant of a dot product between a and b. So now this can be written as a squared minus b, oh, not, not minus b squared, this is times. So this is a squared times b squared minus a dot b quantity squared. And this is equal to c squared. Now notice, since c squared is equal to the magnitude of a cross b quantity squared, now you can see that this quantity squared is equal to c squared, and by definition c squared is the magnitude of a squared times the magnitude of b squared minus the dot product of a and b quantity squared, which is exactly what we have over here, and that's known as the Lagrange identity. So here we have just proven that the third statement is true as well, and Lagrange identity is kind of an interesting one, and that's the way he probably figured it out. And that's how we know the three theorems of vector products does indeed, they do indeed work out. We can show that they are indeed true. And that's how it's done.